Hello friends and welcome to Hope Sabbath School. As we study the lesson on God's mission for us, uh, we'd like to welcome you all for this discussion. And today joining with me is four wonderful panelists. Starting from my right is Sunil. Uh, along besides her is Shivani, myself, Roland, and Smithin and Christina. And this week's lesson is God's calling for us to mission. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the rest of the world. God is calling us to be witnesses wherever we are, wherever we are and whichever situation we are in. But we see a problem in Genesis chapter 11. It's the Tower of Babel. We see the story of the Tower of Babel and there will be some lessons that we can learn from the Tower of Babel. Has anyone have any insights on what the Tower of Babel and what were their intentions that they had? Uh, let me begin with reading Genesis chapter 11 verses 3 and 4. And they said one to another, go to let us make brick and, bring them, uh, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Mm -hmm. And they said, go let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the whole face of the earth. So basically, the children of uh, the children during that particular time, they were trying to supersede God. Mm. You know, God had a few generations before God had destroyed the earth with flood. Mm. And then God made a wonderful promise that he will not again destroy the earth mm. with flood. Mm. But then these children of Babel, mm. they tried to, uh, you know, they tried what if again uh, the flood come. So mm. they were like, they were not trusting God's promise. They were not believing in His word. Mm. And they said, let us come together and build a big tower that will reach the doors of heaven so that whatever happened, we'll all be together. So basically, in, uh, when we look, they wanted to build a name for themselves. Mm. Mm. So that even though they pass away, mm. their children, mm. their children will remember, oh, once upon a time, there was a tower of Babel. Mm. So they wanted that pride. They mm. wanted that, you know, their selfishness mm. had become so big that mm. they wanted a name for themselves. That's a very, very good point what you have brought. They were self-focused. They were focused on themselves rather than focusing on God. And that is the world we live in. We, and they were in complete defiance to the, uh, to the, even the, promise of God. God said what? Go be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And they were just defying God. God's command was given and they defied it and said, no, we will build a name. We'll have a great name for ourselves. We need to have a great remembrance. And generally that is what we are in this world. God has said what two man, uh, what man, uh, what uh, God has put together, let no man separate. But people are breaking God's command. We are just in rebellion with, we don't care what God says. We have uh, various genders nowadays if you look at it everyone they say i can be who i want to be but we do not define ourselves as what god has defined for us and so here we see a very interesting lesson that intentions of babel was only self-focused yes. and the most important thing they did not realize how fragile they are yeah. god just brought a confusion of the language mm. you know if that confusion was not there things would have gone up and mm. the Tower of Babel would have been completed. Yeah. But they did not realize how fragile they are. So in the eyes of God, mm. we all are little. So even if we are living in the end of time, we all need to realize how fragile we are because our God is an almighty God. And God said to go and uh, replenish the earth and fill the earth, disperse them. And they disobeyed, but it's, it wouldn't have been so much easier just for them to obey. If they would have obeyed, God would never have confused their language. They would have never gone to any other places. So it's, sometimes it's very simple for us to obey, but then we just go in direct defiance to the word of God. Uh, yeah, but, uh, very genuinely I agree with these points. Mm. Um, what my notice is, uh, they lacked of their trust in God. Mm. They did not trust God, the God who promised, I will mm. never uh, destroy this earth with water again. So there was no need of building a mm -hmm. tower mm -hmm. and going to heaven because God himself uh, has told that it is not and another thing is coming together is not a issue mm -hmm. but intention was bad mm -hmm. intention is to all be together in one floor so that mm -hmm. nothing should 
destroy mm-hmm. that is good intention in mm-hmm. fact but that was not god's plan mm-hmm. god's plan is to they should scatter and fill this earth and we can see this promise and this promise was given we can see the trinity is creating the whole trinity is coming three god the father god the son god the holy spirit mm. three people came and they told let us make a man mm. and this promises is for human yes. beings and we can see again we can see this in this uh, uh, the trinity is coming back to mm. confuse and to make a big decisions mm. uh, in seventh verse mm. genesis chapter 11 verse 7 come let's go down Mm. and confuse the people there is let's go down mm. there is again trinity is coming mm. so whenever the major uh, turn is taking place in bible mm. there is a trinity mm. the three people are taking the same decisions mm. so, uh, from the uh, from the beginning and uh, we can see that same thing in the birth of jesus also very interesting if you read, when you read that verse it says they went down to see they were building a tower that reaches to heaven they thought they'll build a tower so hard but then god is like is actually it's it's kind of a humor he's like oh that tie that down there you're trying to build that such tiny thing down there so he had to come down to see but they thought they're building the tower right to heaven and then we come that was the end time for them that was the actual end time from the tower of babel and then we see they were living in very comfortable lives they were they were they had everything it was uh, an age of affluence if you would say and sometimes don't we live in that age we we are so much content and comfortable where we are do you think that comfort uh, being uh, in comfort is easy or do you think it's better to be having a discomfort a little bit and how co- how can we confront those situations that may arise especially as we are living in the end of end time all of us when it come to being children of god when it come to being children of the world we all desire we, i mean we all intend to live a comfortable life you know but then this comfort may lead us to danger it may all it may also divert our attention maybe if we if we are living in uh, uncomfortable situation we learn to call upon god more we learn to pray more we learn to depend upon god more when we have everything from uh, the beginning till the end if we have anything we sometimes we even forget to pray mm. and so definitely being in comfortable is a very nice thing it's a new thing but then we should also be prepared mm. to live in uncomfortableness mm. we should be always uh, we should be prepared to uh, you know to get used to living in difficult uh, situation because god wants us to move out of this comfort zone because we are to preach the gospel to the far and wide and we are to be a blessing to our society to our family to our community so that happens only when we come out of our comfort zone and when we really do the things that we need to do amen amen you you grow when you get discomfort as a small child doesn't like sleeping he he tries to get uncomfortable by trying to start walking it might be uncomfortable he might have to fall but then you you tend to grow and that's uh, that's when we see abraham abraham was called in genesis chapter 12 verse 1 then the lord said abraham leave your country leave, leave your relatives leave your family home and travel to the land that i am going to show you god is telling him to leave his country his his identity leave his family leave his protection leave his relatives leave whatever things he knew and were whatever way was comfortable for him and then he's saying what go to a land that i will show you he doesn't know where he's going to show and that is where we move into discomfort and so what was the reason for god to uh, give uh, actually it, it there's a very uh, a blessing which he was blessed because he went out of his uh, comfort zone why was uh, what's so interesting about the blessing from this verse we learned that god blessed abraham so that we will be a blessing to other people mm. and mm. same we as a church mm. should be a blessing to community yeah that's that's a very good point what you said uh, because if you look at uh, genesis chapter 12 verse 1 i will bless those who bless you i will curse those who bless you and everyone on the earth will be blessed through you so the main thing as shivani was saying was he was blessed in order to bless other people and as a church <coughs> are we doing what we are uh, to bless other people Yeah, that's good. That's great point. God has called us to be a blessing mm. for this whole community, for this whole world, for those whole human uh, humanity. Mm. But we want to have our own plans and mm. go away from God, mm. and by and we confuse sometimes. 
and we are we are still there and we need to understand until and unless i cross my comfort zone mm. god cannot cross his comfort zone and bless mm. me and make me use of many things mm. but god has a purpose and uh, we can see now also tower of babel mm. so many uh, apartments mm. flats so building so and they will tell this is comfort because we have security mm. we all uh, this thing still people are going same what mm. tower of babel that time what period of uh, the generation was living mm. same time period we are also living now so we can also see the tower of babels and we are going in search of comfort uh, comfort mm. zone so until and unless we leave our comfort zone and go and preach this gospel throughout the world uh, it doesn't happen it uh, god cannot bless us and we'll praise god that he has called us to be a blessed for all nations like abraham uh, and when we have the power of the holy spirit we we desire to be a blessing to others and sometimes we may be an answer to others prayer mm. and also when we be filled with the power of the holy spirit the discomfort uh, the difficulty challenges become a part of our ignoring mm. we may not be disturbed by it because our eyes are fixed mm. and we look upon jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith amen amen i i get reminded of paul paul said in 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 prison in uh, in uh, in in f- in the ships in the shipwrecks i will still go and do god's mission and he was in such a discomfort but he never felt it to be discomfort and that is such a wonderful thing and we see the early church we see the early church and what uh, they did but just before that we see abraham abraham was taken away and he went to egypt what what lessons can we draw from that uh, that part of the lesson well we all know that abraham is the father of faith mm-hmm. and the training for him was really hard as as i see when i read the bible when we look in the chapter of 12 we completely know how from where as uh, brother read that leave your country your relatives your family and your home he left everything he didn't he didn't uh, even ask a question he right away left to a place where there is only violence mm-hmm. when when we read or when we read the lesson we know that the place is full of violence where canaanites were there but he as soon as he went there god gives a promise let's let's read that in verse uh 6 okay verse 7 the lord appeared to abraham and said i am going to give this land to your descendants so abraham built an altar to the lord there because there was okay it goes on so here that's an encouragement so when we leave our comfort zone and move one step to god and god says we, we know we all know one step for god and god takes 10 steps 100 steps for us right so here i could literally see that god is taking 100 steps uh, for him as well as uh, mission is always not easy but when when you are lying you know what happened to abraham right he lied about his wife to uh, people but still god you know even though we do a lot of mistakes even though we sin but our forgiving god still forgave him and he doesn't stop him from doing his mission or his ministry so what do we learn from this of course we do make mistakes but still god is a god who loves us and he gives us a promise where we can stand firm and do his mission Abraham was the father of the nation three three Abrahamic faiths come out from that the muslim and the jewish and the christianity but still we see that there are faults What's in man it? even though he was the greatest prophet from all the patriarchs the bible is not showing the heroes yeah. the only hero we find is jesus christ he came and he fulfilled the perfect mission he no no problem was found in him but every one of the patriarchs had a fault in them they fell and so we need to learn who is our main focus who is our main hero in this uh, in this is lesson thank you uh, thank you smitten and so we see the early church and they got scattered they got scattered why they got scattered what was the and what lessons we can learn also from the early church okay as we see how the early churches how they preached the gospel how god has a plan for them as scattering uh, this word again we can see in the new testament scatter in the old testament we can see in the tower of babel again this word is using scatter mm-hmm. and if uh, if we want to know about that thing uh, let's go little reverse mm-hmm. acts chapter 1 verse 8 mm-hmm. what does it says okay. we'll see as our uh, text mm-hmm. but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness telling people about me everywhere first first in jerusalem mm-hmm. then throughout judea and samaria and the ends of the mm-hmm. earth there is a strategy of jesus mm-hmm. telling for them as is the strategy of new testament god wants them to first 
do the ministry work gospel work in their community mm. in their place in their house everybody cannot expect us to go out somewhere and do mm. we have to start within us mm. so god jesus gave them first you will be filled with the spirit and first you will minister in your house mm. jerusalem was a well known place for them for all the disciples and it was a well known place and they started in jerusalem slowly they went to judea and then samaria then when they came to samaria what happened that is what it takes to 8 one let's mm. let's turn uh, our bibles to acts chapter 8 verses 1 um, uh, we all know that the great persecution mm. saul went persecuting who all are witnessing for jesus and uh, uh, because of this persecution if this persecution was not happened there was a big for, big uh, loss for us mm. actually it was against of god's plan because of this persecution mm. there was a great plan happened mm. in fourth verse mm. but the believe uh, can anybody read for me those who have been scattered spread the word wherever they went ah, who who who, who preached the gospel those yeah. who all are scattered yeah. so because if persecution was not taken place the scattering was not taking place if that was not taking taken place the news was only been in jerusalem samaria and judea mm. so because of this persecution it reach out to the world even to the india who came to india thomas thomas came to india because that persecution was not happened mm. we were not receiving jesus as our savior we praise god for that mm. plan mm. so what i understand here is whenever we get a persecution or or a blow uh, most of us will be like this maybe this is not the god's will so let's be quiet but here what i learned is uh, whatever happens let's not stop uh, spreading the word of god or the mission is what i learned from here and you see in this uh, verse number 2 it's uh, verse number 1 uh, it says in the in the ending of the verse it says and all except for the apostles were scattered throughout judea and samaria the whole church except the apostles and here you see that every church member was involved in the mission of god every church member went about and preaching they didn't leave it to the apostles okay it's apostles job to preach mm. it was each and every one's moral responsibility as we are all called for mission we are all morally responsible to share the word of god a yeah, oh, very great point that was uh, mentioned because early church they were all in uh, together mm. that unity was, unity there. was there because when when really gospel was lack what the early church did they sent two missionaries ha uh, the Saul who persecuted them later converting uh, as a Paul and they sent Paul and Barnabas how they sent they sold their property and raised the fund and gave them go to the ministry the 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 early church was very united not only going and preaching this is uh, supporting to ministry is to raise fund or some other the praying and we can say early church were together praying also they were uh, praying for them uh, and sending them so we should also prepare uh, um, missionaries in all churches Amen. they are youngsters yes. so that is your duty to Te- to choose your uh, youngsters and send as a missionaries Amen. and let the let the news spread throughout the world that's a very interesting point that you brought out and we generally don't like getting scattered uh, if you see a church getting uh, scattered you will like you want those members to be there but then the purpose of scattering is to multiply and unless you get scattered you will not even multiply uh, that's what i thought about it and that's a really wonderful uh, point brother sunil and here uh, when we look at the early church Uh, they were persecuting uh, Saul was creating a havoc mm. by going to people's house and you know hailing them to come to the prison and uh, he was you know uh, p- really persecuting them but when we see in another city of Samaria what was happening there Philip Philip was preaching the gospel and you know people were so engrossed in listening to the gospel that no matter the persecution was happening in other places they were not disturbed by it mm. they were in full in one accord they were in one unity listening to the word from peter and they believed in the miracles of jesus mm. so now coming to this end of end time at which we all are living now mm. we are living in the middle of persecution and a lot of trials and temptation and uh, a lot of things which we have not heard and a lot of uncertainties and challenges are going to come so in that we are to be brave we are to be courageous because jesus has said that he will come and he will be with us till the very end of this world so we are to always to look upon jesus and even though persecution come 
we have the Holy Spirit and God will continue to lead us and guide us and, the, and God says be still and know that I am God. Mm. So whenever the persecution comes we have to be still and know that he is God and God is in control mm. and that same God will continue to guide us till the very end. Mm. Well, thank you very much and uh, we see you, you mentioned about Peter but Peter got a vision. Peter got a very interesting vision from God. What lesson can we draw from that? I uh, just want to read a small verse from uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 15. He heard the voice speak again. Don't you call unclean what God made clean? Mm. Wow. So most of us, uh, thank God now we don't have that. But in early ages, we know that there was racism and all other things which is there. Not only that, and we call people Gentiles and uh, things like that. But here, Bible or God says to Peter that don't call unclean what God made, God has made clean. So God has, uh, Jesus has died uh, for us. It's not only for Adventists. It's not only for people who are Christians or Jews. It's for everyone, right? Yeah. So let's let's preach uh, for whoever we see because God wants everyone because that is our great commission, right? Yes. So that's what I want to say. Yeah, and, and it's not, not only really racism. I would say even nowadays we keep the barrier of educated, exactly. not educated. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they will not listen to us, maybe how they look, how they dress up. Let's not discriminate into that. And that's what uh, Peter, what God was trying to tell Peter. And can you read Acts chapter 1 verse 8? There are some principles that uh, God, uh, Jesus has presented. And that was our, uh, that is our memory text. And uh, it says about the work of sharing and being witnesses in the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will be given power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and the farthest places on earth. What, what is the principle that we can learn? Jesus presents the principle of spreading his message and teaching throughout the world. Through the work of sharing as a witnesses, he outlined a gradual increase in their work outreach, starting from Jerusalem, which means their local area, which, which, which is where they are not present. Second, Judah and Samaria. They moved to a large area. Mm. And third is, Third and the world, take, taking, talking the message everywhere. Yeah. 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 They took the message everywhere, not only in their own place. Now there will be a point like, uh, after if we are scattering, leaving our parents, our properties, our everything, what is the promise? Then mm -hmm. how God will lead us? Mm -hmm. And we can see many things in Genesis that God called Abraham and he blessed in some other, not only in that promised land, and every land wherever he traveled, he, he this thing, he, uh, he blessed them. And first promise we can see in Genesis 3.15 about Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus coming. But that happened after many years and promised was fulfilled. In Genesis 17.19 we can say that God promised to Abraham you will get son. Yeah, of course he got a son. And uh, in, in, in Isaiah, in Daniel, and everyone, where we can see that about Jesus, the prophecies is given. But when it was fulfilled is Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says that you, you will get a baby, the one boy will bo boy, uh, like born, and you will name him Jesus. Mm. So somewhere promise was given, fulfilled in somewhere, and definitely whoever scatters, God is there for you to. Bless. Just want to add on one thing. Here we see that uh, places are given, like Jerusalem, Judea, and, Jer and Samaria, and farther places. Uh, I just want to compare it with our family. From here, from the local place, mm. it's going out. Mm. So in, um, we are focused on outside, mm. but what about our family? Mm. What about our church? And then what are we going to do in the future? So uh, mission first should be beginning at home, right? So that's what I just want to highlight when I read this. Mm. From local and then spreading it out. Mm. So sometimes we look at going further. They say, uh, the grass is greener on the other side, but there's a very interesting statement. Make the grass green where you are. So why don't we, as 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 children of God, as church members of God, move out, reach out to other people in whatever community. There are beautiful challenges. Uh, challenges mentioned in the Thursday's lesson is identify and make a list of groups of people which have special needs in your community. There will be people who need special needs. Why don't you, as a church, go out and reach out to them and fulfill the mission of God? Thank you, and we will meet you next week.